Hey, what's up you guys? Bloody Jacob here to bring you my weekly review of Van Helsing on Sci-Fi, which was episode 12 of season 2, called Crooked Falls, it being the penultimate episode, we're getting the season 2 finale next week, and, uh, you know, again, it's just really good to know and reassuring to know that we're getting a season 3 next year as well. Uh, I believe they're going back to film sometime in uh, February, I believe, um, but it's just reassuring to know that we're not, you know, we don't have to feel nervous about it being left at whatever happens next week, which I'm, sh which I'm sure will be awesome, but, you know, it's just good to know that we're going to be seeing more of this story, because I feel like a broken record with how I praise Van Helsing every week, um, but it just gets better and better. I, I feel like uh, season three will just really put it, like, right at the top. And season two has been incredible as well. I love this week's episode. Um, I was surprised. <laughs> Again, Van Helsing surprises me, which is, uh, you know, which is uh, not always uh, done, you know, TV shows nowadays, because I've seen a lot of TV, trust me. Um, so it's it's something when something can still impress me, and uh, or at least uh, get me more into it than I'm re ready to be. And uh, yeah, I posted on both Facebook and Twitter recently that I'm going to be doing my uh, top TV shows of 2017, uh, which I will be I'll, I'll be re releasing that probably within the next few days or so, or you know sometime next week before uh, you know 2018. Um, and Van Helsing is probably already going to be in the top five, but now it's uh, solidifying that with this week's episode. It's making a good last run at it, I think, <laughs> um, at just to getting as high as possible for this year. Um, is it the fourth? It's the last day of 2017? I, I forget. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think uh, it'll put it right up there, you know, easily it's in the top five, you know, best TV shows I've watched all year. Um, you know, that's up there, some pretty heavy hitters as well, you know, like Game of Thrones and a great many others that I should uh, probably wait to go into with that video, but also like The Punisher, uh, The Strain, and, you know, other ones you can look at my post if you want to see some of the you know, uh, rank or some of the uh, shows are going to be included in the rankings. Um, but yeah, so why don't we talk about the actual episode, huh? Um, this is another, you know, Vanessa Liss episode of Van Helsing. Um, but, you know, there's, there's good enough characters, you know, surrounding her and that are involved in other parts of the story that I think they can go without her here and there. Um, you know, it also makes sense with, you know, Kelly Overton, you know, uh, being pregnant and everything like that. Again, I'm not sure how that works with the scheduling. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it didn't have anything to do with it. <laughs> um, but I, I really hope uh, Vanessa's still alive because, um, you know, there's, like, even, like, Flash and everything was saying how, like, uh, you know, the vision stopped. And the elder when he communicates with uh, Scarlet at the beginning of the episode he says that the, that the light's gone that there's you know just nothing it's just uh, just dark and shadows and everything um, so they're, they're trying to make us think Vanessa may be dead at this point but I don't think so I think it would be a mistake if Vanessa was uh, you know killed off after what happened at the facility um, I do think we will see her in the uh, season finale um, Maybe next season, I guess, but, you know, I, I would think that even with whatever was going on with Kelly Overton, they would have had her film some kind of scene for the finale or something. I think she's still around. Um, if, it, if they turn Scarlet into the main, main character, I guess it could still go, um, but I just don't think anyone's going to be able to hold it up like uh, Kelly Overton has since the start. Um, but nonetheless, this is a really good episode. I liked the episode last week as well, Be True, the very Sam and Muhammad-centric episode, which I found to be very, a very necessary uh, focus as well. Um, but in this one, we meet up with another group, except uh, they're not a group of uh, cannibal hillbillies or anything. Um, we meet a very important character named Laura, um, who turns out to have pretty you know, deep and uh, personal connections to both Vanessa and Scarlet. Um, and after sort of the facade that the other doctor had, uh, you know, shown Vanessa in, uh, you know, the previous episode, um, we find out Laura towards the end is actually, you know, their real mother as far as we know, um, which is good to find out. And I really like the actress they have playing Laura. Um, she just came off a lot like them right away. I was kind of wondering about it, but I didn't know if they were going to go with it or not. Um, but she's very, you know, she kind of has that lone wolf thing about her too, but she's the leader. Yeah, she likes to carry a lot on her own. She likes to, uh, you know, she's like a survivalist. She's a legitimate, you know, very capable fighter. 
Um, so yeah, she definitely reminded me a lot of uh, Vanessa and uh, Scarlett both. Um, so I think it's very fitting instead of her just being sort of more of like a fragile, you know, doctor type. And she's really great with uh, science and medicine as well, which she very, you know, obviously should be. Um, so I, I think they picked an excellent actress. She's really believable in the role. Um, I don't know if she's going to make it through the season finale next week or something. I don't know if they're going to pull, you know, pull the rug out from under us that fast with her. Um, but either way, I think she's a pretty good addition to the show. Um, as far as the rest of the episode, it had a lot of intensity with, uh, you know, the vampires attacking their uh, holdup, too. Um, and the vampires apparently are evolving, um, which I think is... Uh, you know, there's uh, certain ways to do that with, uh, like, even, like, zombies and, you know, just other, you know, horror, you know, monsters like that. You know, sometimes they can be silly, uh, you know, kind of campy when they try to give uh, creatures, like, that extra intelligence, or sometimes it can really work if done right. And Van Helsing is making it work so far. Because um, as Doc and uh, Laura are discovering more of this and, you know, looking more into uh, what's going on with the blood and everything like that, we see how they're actually starting to regenerate, and it's possible that in the future they could almost be impossible to kill because of the regeneration, and there's just something in them that's going to just really make them, you know, <laughs> I don't know how to say it, but, uh, you know, fucking hard to kill. <laughs> It'll be more ridiculous than it could be for anyone. Um, you know, which, of course, uh, could be a pretty big issue. <laughs> um, now we see the return of the other vampire with the scar forgive me, I, uh, forgot his name, <coughs> you know, but we had seen him as a human earlier on and everything, and he's been sort of having this vendetta with them ever since, you know, we've seen him, uh, you know, back with what happened with Vanessa, too, um, so it was really intense because, uh, they're actually, you know, like, taking out different power sources and everything, actually, you know, using, like, tools and, you know, different, like, melee type of weapons, um, and it didn't feel over the top, it felt natural, um, like, they're still, like, uh, these savages, you know, picking out what they can, but somehow being coordinated. Um, so I thought that was really cool, actually, and actually makes them potentially even scarier and creepier, I think. Um, just the way it was done with, like, uh, that Dennis guy sort of just, you know, sitting up and, you know, freaking out the, uh, you know, the fireman's daughter or whatever she was. Um, you know, I think it's actually pretty good. I think they're doing it the right way. And, yeah, we're having, a, you know, Dimitri's already a pretty good villain, but I'm really buying into, uh, you know, the threat and the idea of the Yelder. Um, he looks pretty cool as well, design-wise. Um, but besides, like, our main villains, I think it's good to have, like, our, like, common enemies, you know, slowly, like, change or become, like, more and more threatening. Uh, because, uh, you know, I still like The Walking Dead, Walking Dead nowadays, for example. I know a lot of people are complaining about it. Um... But, you know, one thing that they need to do on The Walking Dead more often is sort of reestablish the threat of the walkers, but, you know, it's a different show, so they can't just have them evolve necessarily. It's not, Walking Dead's really not so much uh, science fiction, whereas Van Helsing's sort of like horror and science fiction. Um, but sometimes you don't really feel a threat with these sl those slow walkers anymore, but with Van Helsing, I think this is a good thing for them to go about to, uh, you know, sort of keep that threat. Um, in the spotlight so essentially and they're not even they're not even roasting in the sun so that's a cause for concern as well um before we get to you know the thing i'm really excited to talk about which i've been hoping for ever since uh it happened um you know, find out this is also the group that sounded the red balloons and everything too we also see the return of the little girl which is good and uh, i think the forgive me i uh I keep forgetting names for some reason, um, but the, the young actress playing the little girl, I think she does a good job. She's, you know, stringing together her sentences in a, you know, pretty natural way, so she's doing a good job acting-wise for her age, I think. Um, Callie, Callie, that's her name. Okay. Um, yeah, there is something weird about her. I'm starting to get some odd vibes, but I don't know what they're really going to do with that yet. Um, there doesn't seem like there's anything wrong with her. Um... I also like the bond between, you know, Doc and, uh, let's see, yeah. excuse me, sorry about that, <laughs> let's try and go over the recap on the sci-fi page as well, Jolene, okay, <laughs> I'm sorry that I keep uh, slipping names, but uh, yeah, Jolene, I really like her and Doc's bond, I like that they're sort of a... Uh, coming to a better understanding. Again, I sort of like the connection they do have, so 
Um, and I got uh, how Axel felt towards Doc again when he found out about Julius, uh, you know, likely being dead. Um, you know, which we'll talk about in a minute. <laughs> um, you know, I got Axel's perspective on it. I almost wanted to side with him as well. But, you know, we as an audience seen how it went down, and Doc wasn't really as... Uh, she didn't act the same way as she did with what happened with Axel in Season 1. Um, you know, there, there is literally uh, far less she could do with Dimitri there and everything, and it seemed like uh, um, Julius could have been uh, very well dead there, even though I didn't think he would uh, be killed by being slammed against a tree. But, you know, it, it was uh, her hands were kind of tied by a very old vampire, so I don't know. <laughs> um, but it was good to get that reassurance when uh, Julius... Julius is fucking alive, man. I knew it. I said it. <laughs> I had faith. I believed Alex Panovic. He's too damn talented to have off the show yet. <laughs> um, whether I butcher his name or not, I still like him on the show. Um, I said it before. Uh, Julius is probably my favorite character on the show besides, you know, Vanessa, of course. Um, I just think he's really fit in really uh, naturally with the group. I like his, you know, humor, but he also has, you know, some deep, you know, uh, scarred layers to him that, you know, of course a lot of the characters have. I just think he's a really well-rounded character, and I really, really hope he goes into Season 3 as a mainstay. Um, but Alex, Alex Panovic is just so damn likable, and I'm glad he's alive. Um, it was sad to see him at first, though, because we see that the, uh, you know, scarred vampire... Let's see... But yeah, you know, he brings uh, Julius forward because they've been uh, biting into him, trying to turn him, but it hasn't worked. Um, it's probably because he's been directly turned back by Vanessa, whereas with Muhammad, Muhammad was never a vampire before until now, kind of. <laughs> um, you know, so I think maybe Julius and uh, Doc, perhaps, they can't be turned back. You know, maybe there could be, you know, details changed, I don't know. Um, but it's just kind of a... Uh, you know, it kind of hurt me to see all his bites over Julius, but luckily he survives, but not without uh, other casualties, because um, with Lucky in this episode, we see that she may actually be pregnant with uh, Flesh's baby, which of course is just a great full circle, you know, tragic parallel to what happened to, you know, Flesh, you know, before this all went down, or just as it went down um, with his family, and we see that Lucky had probably lost someone as well. You know, whether it was her baby or, uh, you know, husband or boyfriend or something. Um, and they finally decided they're probably going to do what they can for the baby in this world. But she is uh, bitten, unfortunately, and she chooses to unclip her grenade and sort of just take as much of them with her as uh, she can. And uh, it appears like they killed Flesh as well before the blast went off, or at least bit into him quite a bit. Um, probably somewhat fatally, but the grenade goes off, killing most of the vampires besides the scarred ones. You know, I think he could be a good uh, recurring kind of villain, too, because um, he was kind of creepy. Um, but yeah, so we lose Lucky and Flesh. Um, so that was kind of surprising. Um, you know, you could argue that they're, maybe they're more supporting characters, but Flesh has been around for a really long time, and uh, I think Lucky was really trying to work a way up as sort of like a you know, fan favorite, you know, supporting kind of character, so... I was still pretty, pretty surprising to lose them, but, you know, they have to pull things like this in, uh, you know, the final couple episodes for sure. I'm just glad we have Julius back, and it was uh, nice to have Julius, you know, uh, assure Axel that uh, Doc didn't, you know, just uh, leave him to die or something like that while he, you know, held them all off or, or something, or she just ran off and didn't help him. Um, you know, Julius tells him otherwise, so I like that as well. And again, it's just great to have Julius back. I'm relieved, but I believed in it, and it's true. Um, but uh, yeah, this is a this is a really good episode. And then the reveal, of course, like I said, of Laura being uh, you know Scarlet and Vanessa's mother. Um, yeah, like I said, it sort of made sense. I think it really fits. I'm very eager to see what's going to happen in the finale. Hopefully, we see Vanessa. But it looks like we're going to be seeing um, Dimitri and you know getting the elder out or something or deciding what to do with them. I'm kind of guessing they might go for a swerve and maybe the Elder will kill Dimitri or something. We'll see. Um, but either way, this is just a great, great episode. Um, I'm giving it at least like a 9.4, maybe a 9.5 out of 10. Um, I liked it that much. I think it was a great lead-in with a lot of momentum going into the finale. Uh, can't wait for season 3. It gives us a lot to think on, a lot to enjoy. I just love the feel of the show, the violence, the characters, everything. Um, and Helsing really making a strong final push to be one of my very top shows of the whole year. So yeah, follow me on Facebook, Twitter, like, subscribe, I'll catch you guys next time.
Peace.